We're back. We're back, boys and girls. Any relation to the crisps? Number six. Learning to haggle. The quest for gold. Uh, yeah, welcome back to the podcast. Um, first time listeners. This is my experiences as a 20 year old boy running a business in university. So I took a year out supported by my degree. Um, like it was an actual part of my degree to take this year out and run a business for 12 months. I run a design agency uh, called Seabrook Media, making videos, photos, this, that, the other, slowly getting better at blasting through this sort of brief introduction each episode. Um, become very cognizant of uh, sort of podcast etiquette. So one thing I was thinking about was like mouth clicks, you know, when it's like saliva in your mouth and stuff. And I read this one thing that's like you've got to sip all the time. So if you ever hear like a... That's me putting my big cup down. <sighs> that too. Um. So yeah, learning to haggle the quest for gold. Last time we were talking about paid networking. Before then it was career, building a computer, going to New York. We are now in December. And I've just been asked to do a video before Christmas for a rather large company in Leeds. Um, Context of the the company, don't tend to do video stuff, tend to rely on more traditional marketing styles, uh, aren't necessarily B2C, they're more B2B, so it's not like, you know, they've got a viewership. Um... But the they wanted to try something out as like a before Christmas thing and, and do this internal video for the staff as like a bit of an impact report, Christmas report, going over the numbers with the uh the head honcho. So it was uh, a a a person at the university who put me in touch with these people. And I'm. Do you know what 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 kills me is I'm using for reference the assignment that I uh I submitted, and every time I record an episode, I notice another typo, because I blasted this assignment out in like a weekend, <laughs> so that's really really annoying. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to send like an amended version to my tutor and say I'm sorry. Deadline was like weeks ago, but here's a here's a typo free version. Um. Yeah, so a person at the university put me in contact with this lady who was getting in touch with me through, uh, on behalf of this company. And it was initially pretty weird because the lady wasn't related to the company. Like, she didn't have a company email. She was coming from her own email, and it was like, mm, okay. Um, but what do I know? So I was, yeah, so she, she asked to see some work. I sent her some work. She said, it looks great. CC'd me in with the boss, said, uh, this is the guy. He's going to do our videos for us. Um, Like I say, at this point, it's sort of mid-December, like probably 13th, 14th. They wanted something for the 21st. And I was at a point where I was still very tentative with my pricing. So... By this point, and I say this every episode, but I will do a dedicated episode about this later on. I'm just working through the the document in order at the minute. But at this point, I had made, uh, or I'd landed a my first four figure job. So I'd landed a a, a project worth three thousand pound, and the thrill had sort of died off. And I, I'd sort of taken it upon myself to try and push for more four-figure jobs. And be just more bold in my pricing because that's what my mentors were telling me. And that's what everywhere I looked to for advice was telling me to just be more bold in my pricing. And really, I mean, it's a, it is a school of thought that you do have to graduate from. Because, how, like, 
it's hard to rationalise. When you've lived your entire life, you know, paying £1.60 for milk, it's hard to rationalise paying over £1,000 for a video. Um, so I was still quite familiar with charging like a few hundred quid, but I also knew I had to get out of that, enter the new territory of charging, you know, a few thousand, or not even that, like 1,000 something. So this I saw as an opportunity. They were a big company. Um, needed something last minute, fast turnaround, wanted it to look, you know, obviously very good, wanted it to be there before Christmas all done with, it meant I would have to stay later. So I charged these guys, I put together a quote that was about 1800 And I was nervous when I sent it, I was very, very nervous when I sent it. Because every time I, I put forward a new number, I'm like, oh God. How can I justify this? But it's 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 absolutely true. It's absolutely true. Um, like, it, it, here's something for for all you young young, uh, young hungry business hotheads out there. There's people doing what you do and charging ten times as much. So, the only person if you wanna if if you're gonna buckle under the the pressure of, um not charging too much and charge less because it makes you feel better that is the only person that you're gonna hurt do you know what i mean if it's more important to you to charge less for your peace of mind then you are not being your own friend though a better thing to do is to get used to charging more get past that discomfort you gotta do it how do you run a business when you're charging a few hundred quid for a job how like i could never run a i I mean i'm not at that point now but i can't pay my own salary charging a few hundred pounds for a job i don't pay my own salary anyway i don't earn a salary but (laughs) i'm close and that's what my that's what kind of that's what counts because i am making myself pay more if you're gonna earn, a, I'm tangenting here, but if if you're gonna earn, you know, a, let's say a twenty five k starting salary, that's twenty five thousand pound out of your business has gotta go to you. So first of all, you're gonna make twenty five thousand pound. How how are you gonna do that in a year if you're charging a few hundred quid for a job? Do you know what I mean? So be more confident in your pricing. That's probably one of my takeaways. Yeah, in a way, yeah, it is. Um, so I charged them eighteen hundred, and I was nervous, but I sent it, and I sent them like a nice detailed design quote that I put together uh, with a little breakdown. One mistake that I did, and don't do this. There is a uh, a practice in special in in agencies, but in anyone that deals with large numbers, that you will mark up your cost. To ensure a profit, right? So some people, some some places will think about, you know, what their costs are, what they want to get out of the job, and then they'll put like a ten percent on it or something, just to ensure that they are getting a bit more than than they're paying out. And that is an internal number. That is not something you put on the quote to the client. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't do that. Um, I did that without realizing. Well, I I I just didn't know if there would be a taboo against it. I guess. Um, and it might not be a particularly taboo thing, but it's just there are better ways to to present your cost to a client than just saying, "Oh yeah, ten percent markup," or whatever. Um. So they come back after a few days, saying that they hadn't considered that it would be this amount. Would I be willing to go sort of around twelve hundred, one thousand two hundred pound? And I replied saying, "Well, how about I take off five hundred for you, and we'll do thirteen hundred." They came back to that saying, "Um." we've decided not to go with it. So remember, they they didn't tend to go with video 
uh, this would be a sort of a new venture. Time was ticking. So they they dropped the project. And for a while, I was like, ah! Like, I was really annoyed at myself because I'd just seen a thousand pounds slip out my fingers. And what I fed back to my mentor was, I should have said, you're a new client, how's a thousand pound? Instead of 1200, I go, absolutely, we can do less than 1200. I'll do a thousand for you because you're a new client. And I thought that's the route I should have taken. And he was like, no, defend your costs. Like, I don't know, I feel like I should finish the story before I go into the cost stuff. So basically, I, uh, yeah, so I, I felt quite bad about it. Because especially at that point, like, that was a lot of money. Um, you know, would have been a significant, significant purchase for me. Oh, you know, big bit of kit or something. Um, but over time, I uh learned or forcibly adopted the mindset because this isn't something you learn; it's something you have to tell yourself until you believe it. Because otherwise, you will not grow. Some people, I, I guess some people are just natural business people and just a, a sort of always um, pretty resilient to to sort of bartering and, and, you know, you win some, you lose some. But for people like me, like I have always been uh, a, like, I, I feel, you know, I, I put, probably put too much emotion in, into a, uh, business transactional stuff or I did uh, so you know if I charge you a lot like I feel bad about it you shouldn't do that you need to just say like listen it's business the cost is the cost um, you shouldn't feel bad about that sort of stuff um, yeah so to get onto the pricing stuff this is a, a key lesson and probably what I want to focus on because I know that I've sort of smashed through this story in 10 minutes but the key sort of takeaway here is is more about pricing and I will cite my uh, virtual mentors here as Chris Doe from the future the YouTube channel F-U-T-U-R uh, that is the content marketing side of LA uh, creative agency Blind Inc. And Chris Doe is the, uh, the head honcho there. He puts out loads of useful information for design oriented entrepreneurs, freelancers, in house agency people of all different disciplines about how to scale up your design business. And Chris Voss of Never Split the Bill fame, which is a book all about how to negotiate. Uh, he used to be the FBI's lead hostage negotiator. Now he consults, uh, translated a lot of his his techniques into business practices. Um, these guys are the real deal. And honestly, just the exposure of being around them has led to me being like just a whole when I say being around I mean like watching their content reading their reading what they have to say uh, they've, they've changed my life man. Um, yeah pretty 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 good people to look to if you if you're wanting to increase your cost but basically consider this right and this is a, a lot of people are going to resonate with this if you've already started a business um especially a service business if you and a client are discussing a potential job and you put forth a cost whether you think it's a good cost or or a, a bad cost you need to be aware that if the focus is on the cash value more than it is the actual value of the project, you are not going to have a good experience with that client. 
everyone is going to haggle. But if you don't see from them that they feel like they're actually getting a value out of what you're doing for them, your relationship as client and supplier is not going to be a comfortable one. Um, basically, especially if you're in a design field, but really, you know, you can spin this in, in any way in terms of a supply, like what whatever industry you're in, the reason someone is purchasing from you is because they want to grow their business. At the end of the day, whatever means that is, whether it's through, you know, sorting out the supply chain or, you know, increasing the marketing or whatever, 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 they are trying to get an increase of business through the investment they're making in you, right? And some clients understand that. Or rather, well, I would say all clients understand that. But some aren't always blown away by the people that they're working with. And there aren't or there isn't always a level of trust. Now, there's work that can be done on your part to help that. But sometimes you will meet clients that just aren't happy with with what you're presenting them. And strangely, those clients will still buy what you have to what you have to offer, but only after some rigorous price fiddling. Um because they're more focused on the expense rather than what you're actually going to deliver to them, right? So this bleeds also into um, a reluctance for the client to understand the nature of your work. So one mindset that you need to assume is that you're the expert in terms of, in my case, design. And they are the bit the expert in terms of what their business does. And they should understand that your industry has its own nuances and has its own ways of work. Exactly like theirs do. So, and e- even more fund- foundational than that, a business is a business, you know. All businesses function the same. So if you see a client and this is especially again for the for the design oriented individuals if you see a business about a job and they say well let's do this one for cheap and there could be a lot of work out of it in the future or We can't give you a large financial sum, but we can pay you in exposure is the uh, the red flag phrase. Just don't work with them because you can't. You simply cannot. There are clients out there who appreciate what you do and will pay you for your time. And there is no lack of them. There is There is no shortage of good clients, but there is vastly more clients who put you on the same, you know, price band as like a weekly shop. Like they can't comprehend how, in my case, production of a video, which requires years of training and tuition, expensive kit, creativity translated into practical ability, condensation of a story into a narrative that an audience can actually emotionally respond to all helping their brand and their business clients don't see how that costs so much and it's like i'm literally <laughs> i'm making films for you man I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm making movies all about your business that's why it costs that much that's no easy task um and I don't say this with any bitterness. So many of my uh, experiences have been vastly, vastly positive in secret media. You know, I don't have any bitterness. And not, not to this company either. Like, I understand it's just, 
the nature of of working with clients that people don't always understand the the value of the work that you're offering and some people just when they think about the actual size of the business problem maybe they don't want to pour a thousand pound into it because it's not you know it's it's neither here nor there and it's not that important to them to actually get something made for it you know it's like what's more cost effective you know if you've got like a crack in the windshield you're going to buy a new car or you're just going to get the windshield sorted so if someone's presenting you a well i could give you a mercedes if you want it's like oh i don't have a crack in my windshield mate do you know why would you not why would you not so i'm in complete understanding and i'm appreciative of these experiences because this is this is a thing that as well that people should adopt is a mindset thing there is always a silver lining if you've learned something right money or not if you landed a job if you've not landed a job I'm so grateful to have the experience of working with clients and struggling to prove my value because now I understand that that's what it's like. And you won't learn that until you've done it and you've sat across from the table and said something and the client's going, what? Or, you know, you've had pushback over an email or, you, you know, you've lost a couple of jobs. That's so important because it teaches you not to jump through hoops, right? Like I said, you're an expert and they're an expert. And the idea of you working together is that you are partnering as equal experts in your own respective fields to consult one another on how best to solve the business solution of the paying party. Right? Another problem with, with some clients in creative fields is they think they're sort of hiring a dancing monkey to... to um put this, you know, to do whatever for them. And they are like the, uh, the producer, like, you know, like they've like, you know, they're, they're the Spielberg of this film. And it's like, you, you, you would damage the film if you would make yourself so vital a part of it. Why not just put it in the hands of the expert, tell them what you need and let them do what they do. Do you know, so there's a there's things to be aware of when working with clients. A hierarchy is one because you shouldn't answer to your client. You work in partnership with one another. There is absolutely a mutual respect, and there's a there's a very high level of client management as there are in all jobs, uh, all all you know all industries, all services, all practices. You've got to keep your clients happy and you've got to go above and beyond to keep your clients happy. But sometimes clients are out of order and they do ask for things that aren't okay. And, you know, design is a very exploited industry. So if people say things like, I'll pay you an exposure. Do you know, I, I think of this every time I'm not in that situation, but I wish every time someone had said to me, I'll pay you an exposure. I said something like, all right, well, how about I come to your business and purchase what you do in exposure because I'm a first-time client? Would you do that? And they'll go, no. And I'll go, well, there you go then. Do you know, payment in exposure is not payment. A, a, a business deal is a transaction of compensation for work, right? And also bringing back the hierarchy thing, it's compensation for work. It's money for work. It isn't money and also I get to boss you around for work and you get to be my underling, right? Also the promise of future work. How do you know? How do you know? I've had experiences with people um, who've said, let's make this one cheap and I'll work with you for the next X amount of jobs. And then when I explained to them that I really couldn't make anything work with that budget, they said, well, I can't afford your rates. And it's like, what? So you're going to promise future work, but then be well aware that you can't afford me. Do you know, it's, it's that sort of thing. So in any business, you really have to learn to, to assert and get your elbows in. And this is what I've come to realize following this experience. 
is that charged 1800 got off for 1200 came back with 1300 i've been amenable there to a client wanting a last minute thing i run a business you know i can only take on so many projects a year and i want to turn over at least 100,000 per annum right and they want me to make a video in a week for a thousand pound well at that rate i'm only going to make 50,000 pound a year and i don't get video projects every week that last a week i have video projects that last a month sometimes six months six months is the longest video project i've had so how can i justify under underpricing myself for that I, I feel like i sound a bit heated in this um <laughs> I, I, i'm really not but I, I hope what people take from this is the importance of you've got to, you've got to defend your work if you want to be you know sowing the seeds of a growing business you have to defend your work and not work with people my my sort of philosophy now is because i've i've had the experience enough to to understand that clients are not always interested in the price tag but they want the work which doesn't make sense because how does that work in any other business you want what you know how, just how can you how, how, see this is what i mean it, i'm lost for words when trying to comprehend the logic but there really is no logic clients will rationalize it as that's very expensive and it's like compared to what compared to production of the titanic Naturally, it's very cheap compared to that. Do you know the the film? I mean, not the actual shit. Um, you know, considering I'm making you a film with bloody <laughs> sound and special effects and a narrative and jokes and angles and all this stuff. Like I'm naming things that are just par for course in a production, but like you know, just basic things that are, that are, entail video production, but we have to learn about. And we've spent hours learning about how to do it. And clients will tell us that they'll pay us an exposure and it's like, oh, come on, mate. Do you know? Um, so I want to finish on this uh, idea before I get onto the takeaways. Chris Doe, uh, who I mentioned earlier, is the guy that I have to credit for this. And if you want to hear more, just Google, you know, Chris Doe pricing strategies. But consider um, the fact that hourly pricing and day rate pricing are not necessarily logical means. They're reliable ways of pricing because they can extrapolate against time, but that really is what they are. It's a value on time and not on work. You're putting a value on your time, but not what you do, right? So if you, you know, if you're the best graphic designer in your community, surely you should charge the most, right? But if you take a day rate, you know, let's say your day rate is £350, off the top of my head with your talent is also going to come speed right you you don't have to faff around you don't spend ages getting to a project you just know what needs to be done you do it you maybe come up with a few designs but let's say you can round off a project within four days right so you make 1400 quid off that you're the best graphic designer there are and you've made 1400 quid when an inexperienced graphic designer has a day rate of 200 pound and it's so slow that they take 10 days to do something and they've made more than you. Right? So, hourly rates and day rates punish you for being fast because the same goes for hourly. You know, if you're a copywriter, but you're, you, you know, you're punching like 110 words per minute and you can just crack out a piece in one hour. 
you're only getting one hour's worth of work, whether you're good or whether you're not. Now, like I say, it's reliable because you can pin it against something tangible, which is time. So when you come back to a client with a with a, with a a cost, and you go, oh, that's going to be seven and a half thousand pound, and here's exactly why, and that's why it gives people peace of mind, right? The thing is, who determines where that rate is going to fall? Who tells you, you are worth £350, you are worth £200? Actually, it's probably all up to you. Because you're the only person who understands your skill level. You're constantly working on yourself, so you are going to get better, whether you're really good or whether you're you know, a starter. But you decide what your value is, really. And by understanding that, you'll realise that there is really no logic to, to pricing you know, to put in a daily rate or an hourly rate on yourself. There really is no logic to what arbitrary number because there are people worse than you who will charge more. There are people worse than you who will charge less but make more. There are people better than you who will charge less. And there are people better than you that charge more but make less. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's people all over the spectrum in all levels of skill who work at different rates. So, what evidence do you have to say that you're worth three hundred fifty pound? And I say this to open your open your imagination to you can charge more. You charge more. How do agencies get where they are? How do agencies turn over hundred thousand pound projects? It's because they are packing more into what they do, right? When they go to a client and they say it's going to be a hundred thousand pound, they're going to deliver a hundred thousand pound worth of value. If you say I'm going to make you a video for four day rates and walk away with a whopping £1,400, you're limiting yourself to what you can do. So that's exactly the, the basis on this sort of style of pricing that I'm trying to adopt now, which I think is really the sort of the creme de la creme of sales, because if you can do this, you can sell anything. And it's called value pricing. Value pricing is the art of costing something and, most importantly, defending and successfully selling to the client the project that you've costed based purely on the value it will deliver to their business. And it's hard to do because you're just going to slap a number on it and confidently say, that's what it's going to cost. Now, obviously, it's not you just slap a number on it. You are going to run some numbers in your head and try and work out what sort of things you're going to include, what deliverables, what this, that, the other, right? But it is essentially the art of a client comes to you and says, we need, you know, um a year's worth of training videos making and I go well you're turning over 2 million a year these training videos are going to increase things by how much and the client goes by about 50% we think okay so we're going to increase things by about 50% and that's going to entail what change in revenue well we think it's going to entail a 10% change in revenue right so in the next year I'm going to make you £200,000 through these videos I think it would be a fair investment to put down £40,000 and in making sure these videos really take off. And the client goes, £40,000? And you go, yep. And they go, how in the world does it cost that? And you go, because I'm going to take that value in the awareness that that's what you look to make. And for that value, I'm going to give you the best chance of doing that. And if you don't think making £200,000 within the next 12 months is worth spending £40,000 to ensure that, then that's your call. And it's about, you know, it's, it's about getting rid of the scarcity mindset. It's about not jumping for jobs and making price accommodations and things. But, it, you know, it's, it's a really, really hard sell. But if that's something that you can crack and you can start introducing, go for it. Do it. 
So I'm going to round things off. Uh, points of growth on this one were confidence, professionalism, and communication. So confidence in my own pricing, professionalism in putting together this nice detailed quote, and being communicative, being you know sort of the ready to talk about price and haggling, negotiating that sort of thing. Um, takeaways: failures lead to wins. So, like I said about silver linings. This was a good opportunity for me to get over my fear of charging over a thousand pounds, which now I don't have at all. I'll, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it's bloody nine grand for nothing, mate. You want a video? A million pound. How about that? No, obviously not. But um, you got to get over those fears of increasing your rates. You absolutely have got to. Otherwise, you can't run a business. Cheap isn't good. There are a lot of ways to help your client get a better deal, but dropping your prices is never the way. So, I think uh, I think it's Tony Robbins for all you YouTube motivators out there, um, who says you 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 deliver a great service or you run a great business not by dropping your prices but by increasing your value. So, what's better? Doing something for five hundred pound on absolutely bare bones budget because your clients asked you to, or doing something for five thousand pound, but giving them with that guarantee that your business is going to make five thousand pound, giving them a hundred and ten percent both of your effort and what they've asked for. You know, go above and beyond. For me, I've I've sort of taken this as. Um, things are going to be pricey but I know that for those figures I can deliver something that is amazing because I'm so used to working on a bare bones budget that something like that that you know I, I am very flexible on cost and I'm very sort of uh, savvy when it comes to where the investments go to if I have a, an actual roomy comfortable budget I can do something 10 times as good as what I was doing for a thousand pound, right? And then trust the numbers. If your costing looks high, it's because it should. Design is an expensive business, no matter what the client has to say about it. And that's really just something you have to build faith in. And it's not just design. It's you know every business has got to be. You you've just got to get that that confidence in yourself to understand that your business is worth a lot. And if you don't believe it, go and look at businesses that are doing what you do and making more money because they figured it out. You just got to believe it. Go in high. So I'm going to I'm gonna start that there. Next time we're going to chat about how I got sacked. <laughs> this is a funny one. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that then. See you later.